Hi guys, it's Kerry, and welcome to another episode of Wine vs. Wine. Again, each episode I'm going to taste two wines, one that I know fairly well and one that a friend's recommended to me. Now, I'm excited about today because one of the wines that I'm going to show you and talk about with you is from Paso Robles, my favorite wine growing region in California. I love Paso Robles because of the spirit of experimentation that goes on there. And there's also a really great community of winemakers, too, who are super friendly, help each other out, and really eager to talk about their winemaking. Now, uh, today's episode is red blends, and Paso has become fairly well known for red blends, typically the Rhone style blends. Now, Rhone style blends involve grapes from the Rhone Valley in France, of which there are 22 varieties, but the ones most commonly used are Syrah, Grenache, and Mouvedre. So, uh, what I'm going to have tasting today from Paso Robles is not necessarily uh, utilizing those three main grapes, but it is still a blend and it's still something really cool. Now, what I'm about to show you is the Candy Red from Brian Benson, and this is the coolest bottle you are ever going to see in your life. Ready? How's that? Pretty awesome, huh? And there's Candy Red with a K. Now, Brian Benson's an interesting guy. I was lucky enough to meet him when I was up in Paso. He's not just a winemaker, but he also has lots of other interests as well, especially custom cars. And one of the things that he does is each vintage he's going to plan to rebuild a custom car and then create a wine to go specifically along with it. This isn't the Candy Red. The Candy Red is a blend that he makes uh, either each year or each other year, I forget exactly, but he works with Doug Dorr of, Doug, of uh, Dorr's Custom Creations to create individual bottles for this that are just excellent, excellent design. So anyway, Brian Benson uh, started off at Dark Star Winery, which is right next door because that's his parents' vineyard. But he worked his way up and has gotten a lot of acclaim, and he now makes his wines out of Denner Vineyard which is a little bit uh, away on the east side of Paso as well. He does a lot with Syrahs. Uh, I got one of his Syrahs too, tasted the other ones when I was there. They're great. Uh, but he's also making some Mouvedre and some Zinfandel and some other blends. The Candy Red, I don't know exactly what's in this because it doesn't say on the label, but it probably has some of all of those in there. So let's take a look at it then. So anyway, nice dark color leads me to believe there's probably a lot of Syrah in this. Syrah's a pretty dark gray. Let me swirl it up. Yeah, it's got a it's got a nice smell to it, a nice nose to it. You can get a little of the earthiness of the Syrah. Um, there's also a little bit of mineral on the nose as well, uh, something I can't quite place, but it's also nice to have mineral in there to kind of cut the earthiness of the Syrah. Let's give it a taste. Mm, that's a nice blend. Um, it has a real, again, the earthy mineral feel to it, um, very kind of slate sort of a thing going through there. I know slate just because I licked a lot of chalkboards in my time. Not really, but you know, slate. So anyway, no, it's got some slate and then it's got a little bit of kind of a dustiness on the end of it, which again is not bad. When you're describing wines, you can use any adjective you want. I mean, it's really, it's really what it tastes like to you. And you're just trying to make it comprehensible, not necessarily to other people, but to yourself. So for me, it tastes a little bit dusty on the end, but that's not a bad thing necessarily. There are also some really nice soft tannins on the end. And again, tannins are the things that give you that sort of dry feeling uh, when you're drinking wine a little bit, like your mouth's drying out. A little bit is nice. It gives it some contrast. If there's too much in there, then you feel like you've been sucking out a piece of wood, which I don't imagine a lot of you really enjoy, but hey, who am I to judge? So I'm going to take another sip. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit more of the fruit on this one. Definitely some dark fruit in there. Um, some stone fruit, maybe something like plum in there as well. Anyway, enjoying this very much. I'm going to finish it off now. Mm, outstanding. 
So anyway, on to the next line. And this was recommended to me by my friend Anthony. It's another California red blend. I haven't seen it, but he brought it over the other day, put a bag over it, told me not to move it until I was ready to do this. So let's take a look at it now. Oh, it's heavy. Jeez, all right. Oh. Uh, it's in a jug. And it has a screw cap on it. Carlo Rossi Paisano. Um, well, I mentioned last episode that you shouldn't necessarily think that a wine is poor quality just because it has a screw cap. Um, if it comes in a jug, I, I'm going to keep an open mind. I'm going to keep an open mind about this. Now, what kind of grapes do we have here? It says 100% grape wine on the label. Okay, that's good, because I really wouldn't have wanted any, you know, mushroom wine, car tire wine. It's good that it comes from grapes. That's a helpful thing to know. Paisano, what kind of... I, Paisano is not a grape. Paisano is Italian, I believe, for countrymen. Um, okay, uh... I'll give it a go. Again, it's good to keep an open mind when you're when you're tasting different wines. All right, let's pour a little up here. Okay. All right. So right away, I noticed this is much lighter in color than the uh, Brian Benson blend is. Um, let me swirl it around a little bit. Get a smell. I don't, I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything at all. I smell the glass. I, did I actually just take a sip of this? Did you all see me take a sip of this? Because I didn't taste anything. I didn't taste anything at all. Was there actually wine in my mouth? Uh, this exists, right? You can see it. Well, I, you know, I mean, uh, it could be worse. It could be a lot worse. And for that, I'm thankful. Let me talk about food pairings a little bit. The, um, the Brian Benson, I think I would make with some kind of, uh, some kind of pork, maybe something maple glazed. I may have said that last episode, but it's always a good standby. And then, uh, you know, it could go with a nice hearty pasta, maybe with some mushrooms, as I mentioned before. The Paisano by Carlo Rossi, um, food pairings. Um, I, uh, I would say Olive Garden, but you actually need something that has a lot of taste to drown out the awful shitty flavor of the food there. So th this wouldn't be right for that. Um, SpaghettiOs? String cheese? A burrito? I don't know. I don't know. Anthony, I, I'm glad that you like this, but I know why you bought it, because you're a, a fucking lush who doesn't want to have to have a lot of aftertaste in his mouth when he's drinking. So anyway, Anthony...